Okay, well, I mean, like him looking backwards, but before him, like, now I got so much peace. I was telling my neighbor, I was telling the guy on my left, I was telling him, I'm right, and I got so much peace, and even going to walk out there, man, just, the presence of the Lord is so strong. I mean, I just couldn't, uh, I just couldn't help but tell somebody, I guess. And later I found out that there's all these debacles, or uh, there, there you go, the debacles and situations. Yep. There's typical situations that were happening. Someone asked me earlier what the deal, what a debacle is. And so, my own words, it's a difficult situation that comes up. And so the Lord was preparing me ahead of time to help with those difficult situations. There was somebody that literally got the, the cross they took with them and knocked it on the ground. And, and uh, there was demonic influences happening through uh, partiers down there. So anyway, I believe that God really will prepare you as you pray. I'll say this. I'll say a, a parenthesis. As you pray, as you're in prayer, you're seeking the Lord's will. He will prepare you for things that are coming up ahead. So that's either something for individuals or for us as a whole. Always be in prayer that way you'll be preparing. Uh, another quick run the bunny trail. I was uh, I did travel this past Monday. Uh, so I our guest speaker couldn't make it. We had we had a big snowstorm, you know. So I decided I would help out the chapel. And uh, I was just praying for one word. This to encourage us here. One word and the Lord gave the Holy Spirit gave me a word on on uh, uh, basically about uh, the devices and strategies of the enemy. This was on Monday. I'm sharing, I'm sharing real quick. And uh, just one word. And, and so I was just sharing with the guys that it's good to be aware of the enemy's tactics. I'm not saying to give them more credit than these do, but it's just be awareness and awareness. And, and I share with them how, uh, as a Christian, I, I think we have a bigger uh, target on our back than we used to. Because before you're a Christian, and I was talking to the guys. Before he, it was you already under his, you already under his uh, foot, so to speak. You already under his, um, yeah, that way. And so, it's just to be good to be aware. It's good to be prepared. And so, praise the Lord. Sometimes it's good to be ready uh, in season and out of season. If you're called to preach, if you're called to sing, if you're called to whatever it is you're called to, it's good to be prepared. Amen. Amen. Prayer, prepared, prepared. Well, this morning, uh, me and Dion are going to preach this morning. We're going to take turns, and uh, Dion is going to preach this morning about, and we're going to speak on the resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to speak about Easter and the risen Savior, and uh, amen. Well, before I get into this, uh, any, any updates from Thursdays you want to share, or just another time? Any testimonies? Uh, last Cool. I wasn't expecting to have such an amazing time. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, God will lead you to do different things, right? Whether it's a fellowship, whether it's uh, going out. Remember, we've done different things on a Friday night. Our main night, our main, our main night was on a Friday night for many years. And Lord willing, we'll get back to go out with this more. But we're on Tower Avenue. And sometimes we have, like I said, a fellowship, we'll have times of prayer. Or we'll have people that stay to pray. And others would, would go to uh, share the gospel. So being led by the Lord is super important. Hearing His voice and uh, following the Holy Spirit's leading. And I also want to say thank you to Dion and Laura. If you don't know, they uh, help in many ways here behind the scenes. But they also, they, what do we call that? The announcement board? Uh, bulletin board. Thank you. Thank you. They, uh, they uh, reform uh, it, reshape it. They, they uh, make it new every so often. And so they come here, they, they buy the resources, they put it up. And, and so it's nice to have the uh, bulletin board. There for us. Yeah, Dion and Laura. They dressed it up. And also, Dion and Laura to help with uh, our Freedom Fridays. Again, there's not one on the past April. What, what day are we in here? Last March. So there, there's not one in April, but the next one is in May 10th. And so, Dion and Laura help with the music for that. And uh, Dion does a lot of things behind the scenes here. He's one of our lead maintenance guys. They have a behind the scenes maintenance team. So, Dion helps with that. And uh, yeah, please God. Thanks. And uh, Lord willing, yeah, double clap over here, like a double bass. And so, pretty soon, Dion, right, we're going to start construction of the yeah. drum enclosure yeah. to my right, your left over here. And uh, we just got some, uh, what do you call it, lumber and those kind of things from Menards. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, Lord willing, we'll be working on that maybe Saturday, maybe. Lord, what's it, Lord willing, Saturday? Yeah. So, again, we thank you for all you do at Team Challenge Dion, and thanks for all you do, Laura and Dion, the power team. Let's praise God for the power team. Power. 
Also, really quick for Deion, Deion wears also many hats at the Teen Challenge. He's also now, I guess, well, he, anyway, he was a PRSS, he probably still are, sorry, but you're also a short term chaplain and uh, really does uh, also jack all trades. He's willing and ready to help at Teen Challenge. Uh, even also a little maintenance with, with uh, Kevin. He's, I don't know, he's got a few of his own jokes to share with you, but uh, former maintenance coordinator. He's still on call. Kevin's still on call at maintenance. And so he'll teach classes, he'll teach uh, what's called Alpha, he'll teach uh, Breaking Free, yep. that was called? It's not Jacket Tales? No, it's something else? No, it's Breaking Free. All right, we're Breaking Free. And so, praise the Lord, thank you for all you're doing at Teen Challenge. And for the kingdom. And also, sorry, I'm going on, but Dion is uh, very selfless and he's going to uh, many churches. See, have you seen here before Teen Challenge? We'll go to churches and they'll sing songs and they'll. They're, they go to a different church almost every Sunday, almost. And so he'll very often be what's called a rep. He'll rep, real rep. And he'll share with the church what's happening at Teen Challenge, and he'll share what the guys are doing. So thank the Lord and praise God for what God's doing. So uh, one last time, a little reminder. This Tuesday, 10 a.m., Women's Bible Study at Carol's house. Carol and Kathy. <clears throat> wow, that's a, that sounds like a dynamic duo there. Yeah. Carol and Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> Double C. <laughs> If anybody needs a ride out of the Hermantown, I can pick you up on the way through. You can sweep on through it. Yeah. All right, cool. On the way home, I'll just slow down and push out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, we're going to pray. We'll get right into Heavenly Father, again, we thank you, Lord God. I thank you so much, Lord Jesus. I'll never forget, Lord God, the, the times that you revealed yourself to me, Lord Jesus. You revealed yourself uh, as Savior and as Lord, and then you've Reveal yourself as Holy Spirit and power, and also in so many ways, Lord God. I pray that that this that this would be just a time that we can get to know you even more, Lord God. Get to know you through your word, and that, Lord God, we we would continue to be in awe of who you are, Lord God. That we would that our life, Lord God, that you that that the circumstances, the circumstances that happen at the cross and at the empty tomb and then beyond, to show yourself proof that you're alive. That because of those events that changed the course of history, that the, our future will be rewired and changed as a result, Lord God. We will look to you, Lord God, in every situation. You're able to speak to us. You're able to direct our steps. You're able to empower us, Lord God. You're able to work in and through us by the power of the risen Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, there's been so many times I'm just sharing right now that, that there's been so many times where uh, I was on whether it's on the streets, whether it's in the service, or whether it's you know one of those uh, awesome services or conferences, and it's just exciting. Uh, it's probably not doesn't even equate to what it is, but it's just so powerful to see God show up and show out. You know whether it's uh, I can remember even right now or. I'm just talking right now um, in the in the in the pre-introduction here. This is before the introduction, where we were worshiping in the in the in the, in the, in the park in Superior. You know, we had a guitar, and and all of a sudden, uh, someone started manifesting. Just a uh, demon through this person, and the power of God showed up to 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 for for that specific situation. And reminded of the Holiday Center. I remember where the Holiday Center where they used to be, where the buses were, and and uh, it used to be. Uh, I would, what I would say, kind of intense down there, and God would God would lead us to go to those places that His power would be on display through weak vessels, like so many people that, that had come with us over the years, and uh, and there was uh, a person that that really, uh, as I was sharing the gospel, he, he literally got up right in my face. I said, "Come on, just stand right." right. He literally got in my face. He starts yelling at me. He didn't, he didn't try to hit me, but he's just yelling at me. If you want, you can yell if you don't, that's okay. But he started yelling at me. And then he started speaking in tongues. And speaking in tongues, all of a sudden, he takes his shirt off and he, like, uh, does a backflip or something. He just bolts off, running down the block the other way. You can see that. Good job, I And so the power of God on display in so many times. I can show up on New Orleans and, and other places. And also the, the, the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so. Um, so these are significant events that happen in our lifetime, in our life, and and I'll just I'll just kind of preparing and studying and and uh, 
you know, we remember, I'm just kind of showing the natural that, you know, so last year we had, we broke the record for snowfall. We did, we broke the record for this area. I don't know, 200, yeah, it's history, yeah, clap, it's over. I don't know how much it was, it was 100 and some odd inches. But this year, this year we were, uh, at, at that, before the storm, we were one of the least snowiest, uh, you know, on record for the season. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> some people like it, some people are like, whatever. And, and so, but what I'm saying is, we just had a winter storm, and we'll remember that storm for a little while. You know, I guess the Duluth kids will remember for a while. They had like three days off, the Duluth public schools. And so they had three days off, and, and so we'll remember that for, you know, a little while, you know. But some of us, I got here just before it happened. I was like, oh, but I got here in 1992, it was this area. But some of you will remember the 1991 blizzard in October. Are you guys here for that? A couple of hands back there. Anybody here for the, the blizzard? Of, 30 some inches and kids are oh. still going trick or treating where they're doing. Yeah. Um, I was alive then, so. so <laughs> but then also those of us that were, you know, alive and get put the that we'll never forget. You know, where we were on 9-11. You know, night was in 2001. Yeah. We'll never forget. I was I, I was personally overseas in uh, I believe that was Saudi Arabia that tour. And uh, I was in the barracks and all of a sudden someone said you gotta come on and watch TV or we're watching TV was in the afternoon and it happened in the morning so we're watching these uh events unfold and so um you know that that changed our life in so many ways you know have airport security and you can't go in there and have a burger with somebody at the restaurant anymore you have to have you know your ticket you have to have all those things and so that it changed the way we do things for travel right, right. and so this is the significant event events that changed the course of history for us. Jesus telling his disciples, telling his friends, telling the people that had been with them the whole time. Tell, he's telling them that this is going to happen. X, Y, and Z. I'm going to the cross. I'm going to. And he's telling them. And, and there's a plot to kill him. And, and then there's Judas. And then there's so many, so many prophecies telling us what is going to happen. And so these are significant events that we will never, ever forget. The resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so me, personally, I'll never forget where I was when I was uh, transformed. Really briefly, I'll, I'll share it before, but really briefly, it was in May of 1998 and Joel Graf brought me to youth group and then he brought me back in his vehicle. So we have 50 odd minutes in his car. We're talking and and he leads me to begin a relationship with Jesus. And that was a significant event in my timeline of my life. Yeah. And there's so many events that each of you have had. And, and God wants to continue to have life-changing events that draw us closer to him. And we can trust him. We can follow him. We can trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Even here, I'm, I'm going back and forth. We'll see what happens here. I'm being led. Mm -hmm. uh, Luke 23. This is all the way. This is right on the cross. This isn't on the uh, on the uh, slides. Luke 23. Where am I going? Luke 23, 32. There were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, our Savior, our Jesus, was hung up right in the middle of two criminals. One on the right hand on, and the other on the left, verse 34. Then Jesus said, man, can you imagine the love, the compassion that Jesus is demonstrating? He himself is on the cross with his arms stretched wide right here. He says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Yeah. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he is the Christ, the chosen of God, 30, excuse me, 36, the soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, If... You are the king of the Jews. Save yourself. 
and an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. It says, this is the king of the Jews. Glory. Praise the Lord. Glory. It's a, a, yeah, they got it in bold on New King James. said, this is a declaration. Later, I believe, I don't know if it's this gospel, uh, but someone said, I wanted you to write something different, but there's a declaration this person wrote. And uh, I believe that they're influenced by the Lord to write. It says, this is the king of the Jews. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. He, doesn't, he wants to be our savior, but he also desires to be our Lord, the master and the director of our life. Yeah. 39. Then one of the criminals who were hanged, blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. He's saying, Savior, self, and us. I'm, I'm just reading this, and, and right now, he's not getting the whole picture. Tell the person on your left or right, you can choose. It's time to get the whole picture. It's time to get the whole picture. It's time to get the whole picture. See, I believe this person on the, the, the criminal on the cross, he had, he was living uh, short sighted. Is that far sighted? You can only see short with your glasses. Far sighted is it's kind of backwards. Near sighted, you, know, you can't see far. Yeah, near sighted, you can't see far. Far sighted, you can't see near. So the second one, he can only see a little ways upon him, you know, on the cross where he was. But Jesus, who always was, who always is, and will always be existing, he, he always existed. That's who he is. He always existed. He has a bigger view. He has a, a view of eternity. He's got an eternal, an eternal view. So the, the circumstances and the things that we're going through, even in our lives, Jesus has an eternal view. Sometimes you, you want life to maybe speed up. Or in the backwards, you want life to slow down a little bit. We got kids, we want to enjoy this over. You want to we, we got we got we got so we want to enjoy this time and you, you have older kids and you man, I wish life would slow down or, or different things in the sharing. And so the uh, criminal, one of them, says, you, you can save the others, you can, why not just save us? Verse 40. But the other, check out the two, the two um, uh, uh, views, the two views here. You know, I'm not sure. So the, it says the other. So the other answering rebuked him, saying, do you not even fear God? Seeing you are under the same condemnation, and we indeed justly. He said, we, We've got a right to be here. We, we've done this, we've done that, and, and they come back there. They, 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 it says, according to, the, to them, you know, Romans 3 23, all have sinned, fallen short of God's glory, short of God's holiness in Hebrews 12 14. It says, Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. The two criminals, just as us, we had a sin problem, a problem with sin. But the cross, right where these gentlemen are at, they have the solution right in between them. And they probably didn't even know it. The, the, the sin is a problem, but the cross is a solution to our problems. 1 John 3, 8, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Just as he is righteous, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. There's different works that the devil is attempting and trying to do. But one of, for one of the reasons Jesus came is to destroy those works. Jesus was faultless. He was sinless. Luke 23, if you're, if you're ready. Luke 23. This is kind of skipping ahead in uh, Luke, but Luke 23 here says, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people. And indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man. Concerning those things of which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him, and indeed, and nothing deserving of death has been done by him. 
It says here, for it was necessary for him to release one, at, excuse me, to release one to them at, le at the feast. And we, we know the crowd asked for Barabbas. The crowd asked for a criminal to be, to be released. Back over Luke 23. Uh, 41, this man has done nothing wrong. It's actually the opposite. He lived sinless. He was always caring about other people. It's in his nature. He's, he's love, and that uh, the way to demonstrate love is you're being selfless. He's healing people, casting leprosy out, so on. Uh, the dead are coming to, to live. Lazarus, he brought Lazarus to life. Uh, then he said to Jesus, Lord, this, remember this is the other criminal now. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, check out this. This is a promise for him and for us. Jesus said to him, assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Glory to God. Paradise. You will be with me in paradise. Praise God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5 21. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus paid the price for our sins. Amen. Jesus paid the price. And I'll tell you, friends, there, there's there, there's no we we can't pay the price for my sins. I can't pay the price for it. I can't do enough good things. I can't do enough good works. Or I can't do enough uh, of things. If that were the case, Jesus would have gone to the cross in vain. But Jesus went to the cross because there is not a person that can pay the price that he paid for us. Glory. It was also prophesied approximately six to seven hundred years ago what would happen. Uh, you may know in Isaiah 53. Uh, I encourage you to read uh, sometime this week or weekend, Isaiah 53. Uh, verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And uh, some of you may have seen The Passion of the Christ by Mel Gibson years ago, and and man, just the, the, the beating that the Lord Jesus took for us. Uh, I, believe that, I believe the weapon is called a flagellum. Right? It's actually uh, uh, leather strips and there's, there's actually glass and bone in it. And his body was uh, just whipped for us. For us. Uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a, a lamb, excuse me, a lamb to the slaughter. And a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Amazing. Uh, Luke 23, 44. Uh, now it was about the sixth hour. There was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn. And two, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd came to gather to, to that site, uh, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts, and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. I'm going to go down to Luke 24. Uh, now on that first day of the week, I really, really, really love how all four gospel writers are really emphasizing, as they should, in the gospels, the resurrection of the Lord. All of them... Are, are, are showing and sharing verbally and they've written it down for us. They've written this record for us that we can look and see real history of what Jesus has done for us. Amen. Jesus, God in the flesh, 
Emmanuel, God with us. This is what he's done for us. Early in the morning, they had uh, certain other women with them. They came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. Uh, but they found, here it is, what did they find? They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Amen. Why do you seek the living among the dead? So he's not risen. He's not in the tomb. He is borrowed. He borrowed the tomb for a little while. Praise the Lord. He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be discovered, excuse me, delivered, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day, rise again. Praise God. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus came to bring hope. He came to reveal the truth to us. Before, before we're a Christian, we, we need the truth revealed to us. I didn't know I wasn't going to heaven because I didn't know. I thought I was. I'm sharing my story. I thought I was going to heaven because I was a good person. I, I, that's what I thought. I'm going to church every week. I'm doing this every week. I'm, I'm even putting, putting some money in the, in the offering once in a while. And, and, uh, but I didn't know it. It, it. God wants to reveal himself to each and every one of us. <clears throat> Jesus brings victory in our lives in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 56. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, Brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Praise God. 1 Peter 1, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, but like, excuse me, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and your hope are in God. Friends, we are going to live forever. We are going to live forever. For every problem there is an empty tomb. The risen Savior, Jesus, is the solution. I'm on my first clothing here again. I'm going to pass it over again in just a moment. That's the gospel. means good news. Uh, it is finished. No more guilt. No more shame. No more shame. If you feel shame coming your way, that's one of the tactics of the enemy. Jesus conquered sin, guilt, and death. Without the resurrection, we are left without hope. Because of the resurrection, we have an eternal hope. Glory. Jesus is alive, and friends, he is coming back soon. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to invite Dion up here, brother. You guys, I just want to start off by saying that I really am humbled and honored to be here, you know, talking with you guys right now. I love this church. I love you guys. Um, I've been part of this church since it started here, you know, and, and back on, on Tower Avenue, and then and then with moving over to the uh, the other location there for a little bit, and coming here. And I just really support this church. I really support you guys, and I just I, I really appreciate being here, being able to speak this, uh, and then especially on this day, you know, on this this the most important day of, of our lives, you know, us, of us believers. And so, happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Yeah. So, um, just to start off with a little testimony of uh, of myself uh, from death to life. You know, about four and a half years ago, I was I was living a a life of despair and hopelessness, and Jesus breathed His life into me, and I, I came alive in Him, and, and I'm I'm very thankful and honored and, 
and blessed to be walking this. And I thank you for my dear, beautiful wife here, um, supporting me along the way and just meeting her and being able to be part of this. So the real reason we celebrate this day is that Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. His body was laid in a tomb, and three days later, he rose from the dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. The resurrection miracle is Jesus' triumph over death. The tomb is empty. That is such a significant event, like Jeremy was saying. We have all of these events in our life that happen, but this happened over 2,000 years ago, and it's still the most significant event in our life. Over 9-11, over everything, over World War I, World War II, world, you know, all these world wars, uh, everything. The most significant event still in history is Jesus' resurrection and his death and resurrection. So I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity again. This leads us to the most famous Bible verse of all time. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If God can raise a dead Jesus, then he can raise a dead you. This message is for you. I love you guys. I care about you guys. And this message is for you. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus being alive changes everything. It changes everything in our lives. The whole purpose, the whole perception, the whole purpose of our life, it changes everything. Like Jeremy said, there was there's the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It has the Resurrection Sunday. So it's Good Friday. I don't know why they call it good, they say, because that was when Jesus died. But then it goes to Saturday, the Sabbath, and then Sunday, the resurrection. On the third day, he was risen. All four of the Gospels share the, the same story, but in a little bit of a different light. It's a little bit different perception. And, and um, it's, it's kind of neat to see the different stories that, that people see that. So Jesus being alive means God loves you more than you can ever imagine. You are worth God's son to him. It says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Jesus being alive means that God does not want to spend eternity apart from him. He wants to spend his life and our lives with us. He's, he's in us and he's working through us. And his Holy Spirit is, is, his Holy Spirit is what got me up here to be able to preach to you guys about his word and his life and I just thank him for that so you are loved and you are redeemed will you commit your life to Jesus today will you come alive in Jesus this Easter let's make this Easter the best ever as we come alive through Jesus today hallelujah amen, amen. amen. Easter is for you even if you were the only person on earth, Jesus would have died and risen for you. Hallelujah. Easter is not about a relationship. It's not about a religion, I'm sorry. It's about a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Having a relationship with Jesus means having the Holy Spirit to lead, lead us and help us through life. That brings us to our second verse here, John 14, 16 through 20 it says and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because he, it is neither it neither sees him or knows him but you know him for he lives in you Amen. and will be in you and I will not leave you as orphans I will come to you before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me. It says, because I live, you will also live. Yeah. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Yeah. So thank you, Heavenly Father, for living in me, and thank you for your love that shines brightly through all of us, dear Lord. And through, thank you for this church and this body of believers here right now, dear Lord. 
I'm so thankful for his Holy Spirit in my life for bringing me from death to life from from yeah. from that dark place that I was at I was in a spot of, of hopelessness and despair things were really dark for me for a while and, and he just took me by the hand and he picked me up and he put my feet on solid ground and 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 I just thank him for that every day. I have to I have to surrender to him. I have to get up and I say thank you, to you dear Jesus, for, for your life in me. So now what though? You know what? Um, now what do I do every single day? Ephesians 2:10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There's no one in the world exactly like you. God is not finished with you yet. If there's still breath in your lungs, you still have a reason and a purpose. Easter means your best days are still ahead of you. As long as we're still sitting right here, we're still listening to this, our best days are still ahead of us. We have, we've had some good days and we've had some bad days, but our best days are not yet here. They're, they're ahead of us, and we're looking forward to eternity with Jesus. And um, Through Jesus, our eternity is secure. 1 John 3.1 It says, See how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that's what we are. The people that belong to the world don't recognize that because they don't know him. Through Jesus, you become a child of God. You become his children. You're joint heirs with Jesus. You're, you're, his, you're his sons. You're his daughters. You, you, he loves you. He cares about you. Yeah. You no longer have to live in fear, but in faith, because you're part of God's family. Yeah. I, I just love being um, loyal to you with him. He is, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's, he's, and we... Our joint heirs with him. We are. We. we we've, he's. He's gone to prepare a place for us, and, and we. We get to live with him in eternity because of Easter. Because he's risen and he's defeated death, and he's. He's living, and and he's he's in heaven right now, waiting for us. And I just thank him for that. So. You are God's children forever. Easter is not just a celebration of. Jesus coming alive, but of you coming alive as well. We need to be inspired by this. We need to be have the Holy Spirit living in us, and we need to stir up His love. We need to stir up His His power and His 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 resurrection in us to inspire others, to show others that God loves you just as much as He loves me, and that. And that's why I support Jeremy and, and Tabitha and this in this church here and, and going out into into preaching into onto the streets and, and just telling about the love and the compassion about Jesus and 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 we need to find something somewhere somehow in our hearts as part of this family of, of believers to do something for that to stir up our own desires, our own thoughts to be able to help the kingdom of God advance. And, and I, I just really encourage you guys to find, you know, a church uh, to, to do that in. I, I encourage you guys to just really stir something up in your own hearts. It says Easter is not just a celebration of Jesus coming alive, but of you coming alive as well. We need to come alive in him. As he's alive, we are alive. 1 Peter 3, or 1 Peter 1, verses 3 through 5. The hope of eternal life. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, we are alive with great expectation, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation. 
which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Thank you, Jesus. I just thank you, everybody, for, for this Easter. I thank you for being part of my family. I thank you for being part of God's family with me, brothers and sisters. And this Easter, we just want to, I just want to extend God's love to you. Like it says in John 13, 34 and 35. It says, now I'm giving you this new commandment to love each other. Just as I love you, you should love each other. Your love for, for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I just really encourage you this Easter to just live by that commandment as I try to live by that commandment every single day. Just be inspired by his resurrection and his life, his life breathed into you, his, his love that shines through us. Um, as Jeremy said, in, in, I teach a class called Breaking Free, and, and every day before I start the class, I, I say, Lord, help me to just step, I, I actually physically move aside. And I say, Lord, just help me to step aside from your will. Let your love shine through me. Let my will get out of your will, uh, out of your way so you can, I can do your will through me. And, and I, I have to submit and I have to surrender to him every single day. Because this flesh that I have inside of me, it just seems to rear up every single day and it seems to, it seems to counteract his will. It says, for the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come and have to have life and have it more abundantly. Just as his life is real in us, we also have an adversary that, that is alive and well also. And we have to live in it. We have to be part of this world. We have to live in this world and not be part of this world. So his life in us is stronger and more loving and more caring than, than our adversary. So just be encouraged that he has defeated death, that he has, he has gone to the cross, he's died, buried, and he was risen again. So I just thank you for this day. I thank you, Jesus, for, for living in us, dear Lord. I thank you for your, your life. I thank you for your love. I thank you for having us be part of your family, dear Lord. Lord, I just pray a special blessing on this church and a special blessing on these, on these brothers and sisters here, your family, dear Lord. Please resurrect us. Please help us to to come alive in you today, dear Lord. Help us to come alive as you came alive. Help something rise up in us so that we can be inspired. Help us to change this world. Help us to change this community around us and help us to change our, this church right now, dear Lord. Thank you for your will being done, dear Lord. I pray this in your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let me turn the service back.